welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at Brotherhood and Unity. This is a brand new war game from Compass Games, and it's War in Bosnia and Herzegovina, 1992-1995. Now, <laughs> here we go. It is designed by Tomislav Chipchic, I believe is how it's pronounced. I apologize if it's not. Um, this is actually uh, an interesting game in both the topic, which I've wanted to play a game on this topic for a while, but also because it is a two to three play game. Um, and it's rare that you get war games that can play three players or that are designed for three players um, and, and can do that well. So that's something that I am interested in. We will initially probably play this two players, just the two of us here, but. This is one I'd like to um, sit down with uh, and get the full experience because then you get um, the shifting loyalties between the three factions. And there's an extra dy dynamic in there that when you play it two players, you don't have that. You get a fixed, it's Serbs versus a, a Croat, uh, a, sorry, a Croat Bosniak alliance. So you, you get a, a little bit less, I think, when you play it the two players. But it's a two to three hour game, it's a card driven game point-to-point -point movement, so i would be very interested to see how, how it plays out, and it's one that I've been looking forward to for a while, partly because of the topic, um, and that's mostly because I remember this being on the news every day when I was, when I was a child. I mean, I wasn't, I mean, I was very, very young, um, but I remember it being talked about all the time, every single day it was updates and updates, because the UK were part of that, uh, of the UN and NATO forces, but I remember hearing about it a lot, and I, my, my older siblings used to get up in the morning and they would watch, this was one of the first conflicts where, that, that they remember at least, where it was, you'd get the, all of the video updates, and they'd show it early in the morning, raw combat footage, and it was very intense. So, a very, very interesting topic to me, something I've really wanted to delve into, but uh, CSL has a game on this, well, it's Milosevic's Last Gamble, and I just haven't, it's one that I've looked at, and when this came out, I'm like, oh, this is a big bumper product, this is going to be great, so here's what we've got in the box. We have a little packet of dice, sealed for freshness, we have three D10s in here, blue, yellow, and green. And it's one for each of the three different players. Uh, we have decks of cards here. Uh, we will crack those open. I want to say there's three colors in there. Again, it's the yellow, green, and blue. Serbs, Bosniaks, and Croats. Uh, we will open those here in just a second. Rules of play. Okay. This is a fairly substantial set of rules of play. Although the back is reproductions of counter sheets, card explanations in history, that's the appendix, game variants, two player sequence of play. So I think it's designed, this is all three player rules, and it's two player rules error page on the back to kind of give you a couple changes. So that's interesting. It's des this is designed as a three player game, that is its core function. So. I think that's important to understand. So really, 21 pages of rules, uh, full color rule book, dual columned, this is actually fairly large text, um, and it's fairly well spaced out. It's actually, this is not that many rules. If you look at how many diagrams there are, it, this is probably at most 15 pages of actual rules, maybe even less. So I'm surprised in a, in a very happy way that this actually should be quite easy to learn, so that's nice, I appreciate that. Nice little index on the back as well, I like it when a rule book has that if we have to reference anything. Here we have one, two, three play aids, and these are, kind of have a sheen to them, they're kind of glossy a little bit, like a semi-gloss satin, but it's slightly shinier than a satin finish. These are dual-sided, uh, so we have a sequence of play on the back. We have various actions and operations that you can do based on the cards that you play, victory conditions, um, capture rules, UN safe area rules, terrain effects chart, combat effectiveness chart, and just a little player symbol reference basically. These are identical. Uh, this side it looks like we've got 
language reference zones and uh, I, I guess it's like just different regions for the different factions in this game. Uh, some turn information, other different turns, I guess you add different cards in, there's late war, mid war, early war cards I think. Or just early and late I guess, looks like it's early and late. Um, strategy, like what the, the card breakdown and the unit breakdown basically. So those are nice, those are very thick card stock, everyone's going to get one of those. Uh, we're getting into the counter sheets, there are two of them, one, two, these are dual sided and it's just like a reduced side on the back. So, let's look at these. Uh, the actual counters themselves are quite basic. Um, it's just a NATO symbol, three values, and then like a, a unit identification mark at the top. That's most of the combat units. Uh, yellow for Serb, green for Bosniak, and blue presumably f Croats. I th yes, yes. And the back, there's a reduced side. These are pre-rounded, as you can see, and they are just, they punch very nicely from the counter sheet, from the sprues. And on here, you'll see there is no, there are no nubs of any kind of which to speak, basically. So that's very nice. Don't, I'm not gonna sit here and clip all of these, don't need to do that. And they look very, very nice as well. Now you'll see at the bottom is a couple of Markers, which are going to go on the game board. Out here it looks like these are most likely control markers. Uh, on the uh, on the left hand side there, and a couple of out of supply markers, entrenchments, and then some. I don't these little minor nations here. I'm not. It looks like. I'm not quite sure what these ones are. Which who they represent? I'm sure that's in the rules. But that's it. It's it's a it's going to be a fairly small counter density, and a part of that is because if we take a look at the map here, this is a point-to-point -point map. So you're not going to sit there with a trillion hexes and hundreds and hundreds of counters lined up in big lines. Point-to-point -point games often much lower counter density. So the map has two major sections. So we have the entirety of the country as it was at the time that's, that's the play space then we also have a uh, kind of a blow up of Sarajevo which is the city uh, main capital here and then so there's a, a, a much more significant fighting space within Sarajevo so you're gonna have to move there and then you're gonna play all that out on, on a bit more of a smaller scale so I'll be interested to see how those kind of cross over uh, if there's differences in scales or anything like that. Uh, looking like... Okay, so if we go back to those units... Well, now I'm not sure. So it looks like these purple ones... Are, uh, Croatian units. And then these... These red ones... Are Yugoslavian. And then the orange ones... Uh... I don't know what those are. I'm not entirely sure. Krajina? Are they different? They're Serbs. They're, they're a form of they're different. They're, they're Serbs. Okay, great. <laughs> so those are their the little minor. I don't know if those affect anything uh, as like attacking in and out of those, but. That's what those little minor nations of units are for. But mostly we're going to be fighting over control of these. And you can see it's point-to-point -point movement. Um, th these are mountains. This is a city. It shows there. It looks like this is kind of a marsh area. And again, all of that was referenced on the play aid here. And then within those, it looks like... I don't know if this is starting control. So we've got the blue... Um, for the Croats, for example, and the green for the Bosniaks, and then these yellow ones up here for the Serbs. But there's there are these big regions in which there are spaces, and then I think referencing this, this goes to the language reference. 
So I don't know if there's rules about, oh, in a, in whatever language zone you can do a thing, maybe, for the cards. But there's a, there's a lot on here. Foreign Attitudes track, Strategic Will track, you have a map key, a lot of different holding boxes and different bits and pieces. Uh, but that's, there's a, so there's a lot on here. But the reality is, play space, it's not that many spaces. It's actually a fairly small play space, so that's nice and should help to aid play. They say it's about a two to three hour game or so. So let's crack out the cards here. We'll take a look at these. Okay. All right. So the cards are divided into the three different nationalities. So we have Bosniaks, Croats, and the Serbs. And each of these, so within each of the the different nationalities there is a light gray early war band and then there's also a dark gray late war band as well and it, kind of what you would expect there is an event there are a number of action points or ops that you can do um, some of these are combat events some of them are different offensives that you can launch and there is a whole bunch of these these are kind of how this, this is how they print them. Um, some of them, it's kind of interesting. So some of them have like symbology on them. Some of them's kind of, it's like a generic counterattack kind of symbology. But some of them have uh, historical pictures of people on them as well. So there's a nice mixture of um, seeing what there actually is. It looks like a big... Is that a, looks like a recoilless rifle on there some leaders. So there's a lot of different things here. We'll kind of just go through these. Looks like artillery pieces. Minefields. So it's a mixture between pictures and, and kind of diagrams and illustrations. There's a whole bunch of these cards. And then there's a whole other deck of them as well. So I guess as the war goes on, I don't, you know, this situation changes and you'll get more cards coming in. There is a lot of cards in this. So yeah, I'm actually excited because I, I always find that games with more players, especially if you have an odd number of players, it's designed to have a diplomatic and shifting allegiance dynamic to it. I really like odd number player games because there will be there's always some shift at some point in the game, and I think that's that's always an interesting from a mechanical standpoint, something to, to deal with and to play around with and you know, trying to maximize opportunities based on those things. So I am in very, very interested to play this as a three-player game. When that's going to happen, don't know. We'll definitely get the two-player version of this played. Um, components are great. Really happy about those counters. Uh, and this is a, it's available on their website now. The pre-order price is really good on this one. So uh, if you're interested, check it out. Uh, this is Brotherhood and Unity. Very evocative title uh, based on... Uh, Yugoslavia's policy of trying to unite the Slavic peoples under one banner uh, of socialism. Uh, obviously, that's not what's happened in the end, but uh, a, a very interesting game, one that I'm personally very interested in as well. So, appreciate you guys tuning in. This is Brotherhood and Unity, War in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1992-1995 from Compass Games. Uh, I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.